landscape is in some ways like a living creature. The patterns and the shapes and the processes that you see in the landscape are a result of those living processes, that interaction between the water cycle and, uh, and biodiversity. It's about learning how to read the landscape and understand that landscape and how that landscape was built, what the processes were that, and are, because they're continual, they've been operating since the beginning of time, that either build that landscape or erode that landscape. I saw a, like a quote on the back of a furniture removal truck once when I was on my way to the airport going to a conference. It said, dead fish always swim with the flow. And I've got no idea what that's got to do with furniture removal, but I reflected on that from the perspective of life itself. And that's exactly what life does, is that it swims against the flow, like a fish will swim against the flow for one thing. But if you think about the flow of energy, and entropy, I was talking about this a bit earlier on, and uh, that, you know, that the flow of energy is an example of increasing entropy, the universe becoming more chaotic. And it is only life and the complexity of life that is swimming against that flow of energy. We're at Bill and Jackie Perte's place, livestock production property. I consider Bill to be very innovative and when you come here you can see a living example of it. What's gone well with it and what hasn't gone well, it's quite a harsh environment. It was cleared early on when settlers first came. So you can see what's lacking in the landscape as well as what's been done in the landscape. Spending time organising the event with Peter and Jack, I got lots of ideas and uh, insights and and sort of how we can improve those riparian areas and how the engineering and structures really work. The higher view is just getting an idea of the whole catchment and, and what's going on and where the floodplain is, trying to find those areas of energy. I'm surprised how quickly it's recovered. Those areas have always had 100% dry matter even right through the drought, so it's been good. <laughs> you know, our research that we're doing at Maloon, you know, it's triple bottom line research, it's, it's systems focused research, uh, you know, we're looking at environmental outcomes, we're looking at economic outcomes, we're looking at social outcomes as well. It's difficult research to undertake and it's long term and it's really just, you know, lots of little bits of research which all kind of link together to provide that big picture outcome. The fundamental idea behind that, though, is that, uh, you know, you repair the environment, you're going to improve agricultural outcomes, you're going to improve social outcomes. So it's all, it's all interrelated. It's all, it's all integrated. Environmental health is directly related to human health. You know, we're sitting in a water catchment here, aren't we? Just overlooking a, a, a water supply dam. You know, you fix this catchment, you fix the water quality, you fix the water availability as well. You've got a direct economic result there in terms of the water quality uh, and availability as it comes out of people's taps in the town. So I was with Landcare as a Malpas catchment coordinator a few years ago during the height of the drought. And obviously we had a pretty major crisis with the water supply. It was really hard to get change and Bill's been a bit of a, a leader there, like he's done some really good work and a bit of an innovator that people are really interested in what he has to say because he has a strong production focus but is also very focused on the environment, environmental outcomes. I think we're just in a time of really good change where people are starting to open their mind to different ideas because we have that um, looming threat of running out of water. <laughs> There's this idea around of the soil carbon sponge where you increase your soil carbon and organic matter and your soil then holds water and that becomes part of your landscape reservoir. So it's an extension from your water reservoir. And if we could get landholders in this catchment to manage their land in that way, in that their soil is storing water, we would probably have less problems going into a drought, we'd be able to sustain water going into that catchment for a lot longer. There's the opportunity there to build on this into the future, to run some courses and to encourage landholders to manage their water in this way. <laughs> <laughs>